Hello friends, and welcome to Fright Night Files and episode number two of Autopsy Simulator. Yesterday we did the prologue. Today we'll continue to chapter one. Let's see what's next for this very distressed pathologist. Chapter one. Forgive me. What? what? Oh, Christ. Oh, what a dream. Yeah. Oh, Prologue ended with the with a crazy ass dream. Go check it out if you haven't again. Time flies. And probably doesn't have to get up to work. Maybe you should, you know. Clean up a little bit. Okay. And as always, uh, we need our pills. So much light everywhere. We can find the bathroom. I haven't been in this house here before. Here's the bathroom. A pill a day keeps the defective jack away. Well, yesterday we had to take two pills <laughs> in the prologue. It's a shame this won't help with my hangover. And stop drinking. Get a wriggle on. Answer the phone. The fucking phone. What's your language, dude? Okay, okay. I know I'm late. I'll be there soon. It's not like the dead are impatient. Jack, no. Uh, Alice? Who, who is this? Who's Alice? It's Charlotte Graves. No. Oh, uh, oh, God, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you. I thought... I thought it was worth calling. It's okay. I hate it when work calls me at home too. How is everything? We Who doesn't? Talk since, you know. Uh, well, there are good days, and there are bad days. Mostly bad. What can I say? At least I can. For this guy. At work. Well, you always were the most comfortable in the dissecting room. Listen, I have an unusual request. Okay. How can I help? It's nothing serious. I just wanted to ask. Do you have any pictures of Alice? Maybe one where the two of us are together? I'd love to have something. I think Alice her. is our I wife, guess. you know? Our late wife. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll look through her things. Thank you. I'm sorry to trouble you. She did. Well, this can't be easy for you. I'll get through it somehow. I've been meaning to sort through her stuff for a while. Have you asked Stephen if he has anything? Yes, I, I spoke with him this morning. He said he gave everything to their mother and that I should ask you. I see. Jack. So Stephen is our brother-in-law. trying. That you cope somehow. Stephen's there for you. Although, <laughs> well, we all know how he can be. But, um, I mean, if you want him to reminisce about Alice, talk. I really should go now. I overslept, I'm late for work, and, uh... And I'm hangover. Some errands to run on the way. Oh. <laughs> hangover. Okay, sure. Sorry to keep you. I'll look for something and send it over. Thanks for the call, and bye. Oh, do you have my address? Um, not on hand. You'd best remind me again. Two nine two Browning Lane, apartment four three two, Johnson City, New York. New York. Three seven nine zero. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. It would mean a lot to me. I'm late to work. Stop talking. Yeah, me too. And that's okay. Really, no problem. Thank you. Take care, Jack. You too, Charlotte. It was nice to hear you. Uh, well, that was a bit unexpected for today. Let's have a beer for breakfast. Take away coffee. Find a photo of Alice and an envelope to send to Charlotte. Okay. This ain't Alice. No, nope. definitely not. I'm not in the mood for music lately. Let's find a photo of Alice. This must be her, right? Can I take it? No. Huh? This is a good one. Can I take this one? Okay. 
I guess it needs to be a... Be one that is not framed, maybe. I'm guessing. An indispensable element of every office. I should really try and read it. It's a good picture of her. Why not just send this one? Some days, I just feel like setting fire to all this paperwork. I'm fed up with it. Okay, I guess it needs to, uh, to be a non, uh, a non-framed picture. But I can't seem to find any. Oh, he misses her. Well, of course he does. It's been almost a year. Where do you find a photo of Alice? of last night's binge with Steven. I'm not sure if it's still edible. I don't know. I think I looked at every photo in here, right? They certainly have more will to live than I do. <laughs> All right, I still that. feel uneasy. At oh, here's time, one. That's not friend. No. Probably be sitting here reading a book. Those are some dogs. Find a photo of Elsa envelope. Haven't even found the envelope yet. Can't take a photo from here. There's no photo of her. Hmm. This is our way out, right? Yeah. Guess we find won't find any photos there. How hard can it be? Why doesn't it light up or it something? It's too much to look at these, but I can't throw them away. Where the heck do we find a photo of her? Huh? There's none hanging here? No? I have no clue. Hmm. I really need to get this laundry done. You really do. Ah, maybe through her stuff here. I wasn't able to support her through this. I don't see any photo in here either. It's always good to have something for a rainy day. Uh huh. It was a miracle that the coffee didn't wash off the writing. <sighs> Will you and marry me? Said yes. Oh. Till death do us part. Yeah. So it did. She got it for her first day of work, and she broke it the same day. She <laughs> said it was for luck. Okay, no photos in there either. Why can't we find... Game? Why are you making this so hard for me? There's no need to. Hmm. I don't think it's going to rain. It won't be in here, that's for sure, right? Take a piss. I think I'll take a piss at work. At okay. least their toilets will have been cleaned. 
It's just too dirty to use. It's just too dirty to use. Uh huh. Nah, I'll shower later. Yeah, postponing everything. Where the heck? You'll find an effing photo of our wife. Late wife. Been looking at all the photos here. I tried to open every cupboard and stuff, right? And there's really no not hanging any photos on the walls. Why can't you just use this one? It's perfectly good. <laughs> mm. I really need to get this laundry done. At this pace, we won't get through all of chapter one in this video, it seems. That's not her, I hope. <laughs> Should be in it her stuff, you know. Look at these, but I can't throw them away. Is it lying on the floor somewhere? I feel like I've been looking through everything, right? Take a photo out of, the, out of the frame and send it. The view isn't spectacular, but why does that car look familiar? I have no clue, guys. Find a photo of Alice and an envelope to send to Charlotte. Menu for today. Dinner in town and a takeaway coffee. Do I have to find it at work, maybe? Could be, right? Maybe. Maybe in the car, because there's definitely nothing in the apartment, you know. Oh, for fuck's sake, maybe they'll finally fix that door. Okay, can't get out that way. So which one is our car? Do we even have a car? This shit bucket, is it? What? Let's have a look behind here. nothing uh, 
There's nothing I can do out here. It must be in the apartment then. Oh man. I guess the objective will first be get to work if it was there, right? was here, right? Eh? Yeah. Oh, where do we find the fucking photo of Alice? Alice didn't like this portrait. Oh, Alice send send this one. Like this portrait. You have been looking through all this stuff. There's no. Ah, here Alice we go. Charlotte and Amsterdam. Please just send this one. It's hard to believe they've known each other for so long. Uh, these were from Thanksgiving. Stephen invited me. I was going to give them to his mother, but then I met Alice. That was the first time I saw her. And she was B E A U T I F L. Now for the envelope. I haven't seen an envelope either. Where does one find an envelope? It would be better in the office, of course. This. Here we it have. Deserves to be on display and not hidden in a drawer. Here we go. Okay. Finally. Time to go to work. I'm seriously late. It's gonna be a long episode, I guess. Post the letter in the mailbox. Where's the mailbox? Uh, I should grab some coffee and aspirin on the way. Coffee and aspirin. The remnants of last night's binge with Stephen. I'm not sure if it's still edible. These fluorescent tubes. I think the aspirin is here. Yeah? No. I don't know. Post the letter in the mailbox. Where do we find the mailbox then? Should be a mini map or something, you know, <laughs> showing us where to go. Put it in here. Standard correspondence consisting of rules, advertising leaflets, and pious reminders about the upcoming end of the world. Standard correspondence. Guess we can't send letters through here. That makes sense. Well, where do we send letters then? Post a letter in the mailbox. Ah, here it is. Wish you could sprint a little bit. That'd be awesome. I hope this helps, Charlotte. Okay, all done here. Time to go. We can't save the game, so we have to finish the chapter, I guess. What? Hello? So which one is our car? This one. Ah, damn, I forgot my jacket. Ah, uh, well, I'll brave it for tonight. Too bad. I don't know if it auto saves like here or something like that. <sighs> nice and fresh. At least it's peaceful here. Very peaceful. With all the dead bodies. Go Good to the office. Evening, Mr. Ridley. <clears throat> 
time sheet him and I don't see Mr. Ridley. Some corpses have more personality than this guy. <laughs> the office, where's my office? Office. Christ. Who leaves the window open in the middle of November? Yeah, you so did. I better check the answering machine. It's cold as F, man. Hi, Jack. I dropped by a little early today. I left the body with Ridley in the corridor. He wasn't sitting in the locker then, so maybe he'll even throw him into the room. <laughs> well, how are you doing? Just it's your great. First birthday without her, and this um, I still have a hangover, and <laughs> you know me, I run to the John like the neighbor's fucking dog. You know, today I slipped on his shit again. That fucking furball. He always <laughs> had to shit next to my car. Anyway, I can't come over in the evening, but we'll catch up on the weekend, okay? Bye. Ah, I almost forgot. Charlotte called me this morning. She asked about you, so answer your calls, Jack. I did. It's not a reprimand for being late. <laughs> That's bar for the course. I wonder when this clown will learn to look under his feet. Inspect your muppin. Okay. okay. <sighs> I actually forgot it was today. Alice make me muffins like these every birthday. <clears throat> a treat for later. I always crave something sweet after a section. <sighs> Okay, joke's over. Apron, gloves, and get to work. Let's get dissecting. Dissecting room. It's the apron. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I remember you. You were on that talent show. What was your name again? I need to order another batch of these. I've got to remember to do that later. <laughs> We're talking about point. What? Who was on the talent show? Okay. Have to start filming. Steven laughs at me for recording everything. He says I have a bigger collection of stuff like this than most of the creeps he's caught. Yeah, you're selling it on the dark web. November twenty first, nineteen ninety one. Time. 9.13 p.m. The autopsy is conducted by Jack Handman. Lecture for the Medical University of Missouri. After yesterday's lecture, you should already know the ins and outs. So today we'll be consolidating our knowledge. So, where do I start? That's right, release folder. What's here? Ah, yes, Samantha Barker. Now I remember, there's probably gonna be a lot of chatter about this. So he was talking about her, yeah. Found in her own apartment by police patrol. Officers were called by a concerned friend of the deceased, who had been unable to contact Barker for several days. During the interrogation, a friend of the deceased admitted that Samantha never got to grips with the sudden fame that came mm. after winning such a high-profile talent show. The deceased was found in her own apartment, in a semi-recumbent position on an armchair. Is it Large suicide? of alcohol and empty packets of sleeping pills were also found in the apartment. Seems like suicide to me. After her first album became a commercial success, she was hit with a creative drought. She suffered panic attacks and severe sleep problems. Drugs and medication came into play. Amy Winehouse? Anyone? Question, Anyone get those those wipes? Admitted that Samantha's last days before losing contact seemed extremely happy and relaxed. She also quit drinking alcohol and mentioned something about rehab. The friend also ain't gone to rehab. No, no, no. Ending tragedy. Well, let's see what settled this matter. As you can see, the body is fully clothed. Therefore, before we move on to photographic documentation. We must remove the clothes. This time, we don't have to focus on the clothes too much. However, there are cases where a clothing analysis can lead to the cause of death. 
Okay, now we can continue with the examination. Again, begin by taking photographs of the cadaver. I guarantee that over time it will cease being embarrassing for you. <laughs> Pick a photo camera from the desk drawer. Let's get our old trusty Polaroid. First, we photograph the whole body. From head down, he's, I think he said in the prologue. And now, any suspicious looking marks or wounds. Right here. You don't get such bruises from a normal contusion. Okay, there are five. Five photos we need to find here. Interesting. Very uneven. We need to investigate this. Was she strangled? And then maybe... And maybe they just put a lot of pills and alcohol in her, so it would seem like suicide. Might be. No head trauma. It's very well bruised up, yeah? photos to the photo board well done hanging mark stomach bruises uh -huh. perform the autopsy the fun begins notes prepared time to take a closer look Let's find our magnifying glass. Such Have a look. bruises are caused by either a very heavy blow or by some internal issues. We'll find out today. Some furrows have imprinted more strongly, others less, as if someone was um, undecided. Okay, I guess this was no suicide. The number of bruises suggests that there may have been some kind of tussle. Yeah. And here's something interesting. The skin of the deceased is covered with numerous blisters. Some of them are ruptured. Others still contain fluid residue. Mm-hmm. Have something on the feet as well, yeah? More numerous blisters. We have some leads to investigate here. Let's write this down. Let's find the clipboard. Shift. On the neck here. of the deceased, we can see clear furrows, indicating that strangulation may be the probable cause of death. Yeah. Currently, it's difficult to say whether the bruises were the result of a beating or whether it could be some kind of internal bleeding. In general, such blisters usually appear in the case of mechanical abrasions, but due to the place of occurrence, this should be excluded. The most likely cause of such skin changes is the high concentration of barbiturates in the body. Given the condition of the deceased, it's difficult to tell immediately whether the bruises were the result of a struggle or perhaps the result of iron deficiency. Although it's easier to have abrasions on your feet, but the number and size of the blisters suggest that it's probably a matter of barbiturate poisoning. Okay, could there be a lot of cause of death here? Yeah. A severed spinal cord. Trauma to the larynx or trachea will verify whether the hanging was the final nail in Miss Barker's coffin. Yeah, could be suicide. After examining the organs, we can easily verify whether there was internal bleeding or whether the deceased was suffering from something. I'll add barbiturates to the list of necessary tests. Yeah, because all of the pills and alcohol and 
Examination with a UV lamp will dispel some doubts. Potential attackers could have left traces. Mm -hmm. To be checked in the lab later. Given the testimony of the victim's friend, I add alcohol poisoning to the list of potential causes of Miss Barker's death. A blood test will no doubt quickly verify that hypothesis. But first I'll check for external traces. For this we use the good old UV lamp. Let's find the UV lamp. I look carefully at the whole body. UV rays will reveal any traces. The area around the head is empty. Torso. Empty, without marks. The arms, nothing. Other arm. No. Nope. Right hand clean. Legs. There's nothing here. Left hand seems to be fine. No marks. Oh, well, nothing to surprise us here. Now, gently, we take the deceased by the hand. Yeah, rigor mortis examination. And we check for rigor mortis. We pull it up slowly. And then we get to the top, we'll release. Oh, that was too fast. Again, the hand falls freely. After She's dead. He should know what this means. Since we don't have a definitive lead, we will examine all the key organs one by one. So, I'm starting the internal inspection. Oops. Select the scalpel. I dissect the skin of the deceased. Oh, I didn't really get all of it here. Imagine having this job, and you know? proceed to deflect the skin flaps. Compared with yesterday's body, the deceased has only trace amounts of adipose tissue. Who in their right frame of mind choose a career like this? Now for the ribs. Let's find the loppers. We have here? Cut open oh, the rather. ribs. What don't we have? There is certainly no sign of internal bleeding. Sometimes regarding bruising, it doesn't take much. <sighs> My wife was constantly banging into furniture, walking into door frames. That's a wonder she never broke anything. Before I disembowel the deceased, I will take samples for toxicological tests to determine the alcohol content in the body. <clears throat> I Oops. just need my syringe. Just to be sure, I'm taking samples from three organs. The eyeball, the heart, and the bladder. Analysis will rule out, or confirm, alcohol poisoning as the cause of death. Imagine putting a syringe into someone's eyeballs. All done. <laughs> I'll transfer these to the centrifuge. Hmm. What was it? 15, 70, 10, uh, 75? I, I think I remember what it was. Maybe no, I don't. I <laughs> my notebook. Let's take the notebook. Numbers have never been my strong point. It's probably why I regularly forgot birthdays and anniversaries. I'm lucky Alice always forgave me. Hey, can I? Uh, N for notes, yeah? 15 minutes and 70%. Yep. It's up to 15 minutes. Handle with kid gloves. And 70%. There, start centrifuge. I'm starting the centrifuge. Let's see what results come out. Is it alcohol poisoning or no? The laboratory is already open, so. Fuck it! Again? Hell. Every time we use the centrifuge. Uh, Ridley! Mr. Ridley! Uh, where is he? The fuses need resetting. Fuck it. Uh. I'll do it myself. 
I swear there was a flashlight in here. The horror begins. It's the laboratory. It's the bathroom. Oh, it's the storeroom. Here? Whatever. I, I think. Know where the switches are anyway. Should have brought the flashlight. <laughs> I can't see shit. Uh, did he have a flashlight in in here? Was it just something he said? Hmm? I can't see shit in here either to find the flashlight. So. Will it like light up or something? Now I have no clue where I am. It's been a while since the eye wash in this thing was changed. It's probably... I don't know what we're looking at here. I wasn't sure it would amount to anything, but the World Wide Web has been a blessing, poor soul. I get cases like this more than any other. Scalpel, scissors... I can't, I can't find this. Way too dark. Glass, knife. I guess I forgot to clean the knife. I don't know. This could also be the storage. Yeah. Ah, here we are. First the right, and then the left. And voila. emergency power. Turn to the autopsy. What? What? What was that banging? Hello? Ridley? Is that you, mate? No? Did you guys hear that banging? Okay, let's just what get back. The, uh, oh, for fuck's sake. Can't I work in peace? I guess no. Hello? Jack Hanman speaking. Easy, why so rude? Steve? <sighs> Sorry, man. This place is falling apart, and Ridley won't even lift a finger to help. You just can't work here. Did the centrifuge trip the fuses again? Yep. Yeah, eventually everything's gonna go up in smoke. <laughs> Look on the bright side. It's a free cremation with your autopsy. Jesus, <laughs> stop it. That shit pisses me off. Okay, sorry, Jack. Not in anyway, the mood for I'm jokes. I'm going to ask how the autopsy's going. Soon there will be journalists snipping around for info, so we best be ready. I'll whiz through this in a couple of hours. It doesn't look like a complicated case to me. More of a formality. The report will be available in the morning. Sounds great. Thanks. Will it be a formality? Sure, well, my head seems better than yours. On the way to work. Holy fuck, Jack. Turn on the radio. What? What's happening? Quiet. A three-car police convoy was involved in an accident near Pete's Bay Bridge while transporting prisoners to Orleans Parish Prison. At the moment, we do not know the exact number of victims or whether any of the convicts escaped. Okay. However, the scale of the accident indicates a large number of victims, possibly even fatal ones. Police are on their way to investigate the incident and secure the area. We know that the injured prisoners are on death row. The police were to transport them to their execution, which was to take place tomorrow morning. Many of them are very dangerous criminals. We will report on the matter on an ongoing basis, so stay tuned uh -oh. with us. What? What? Was? Um. Stephen. Was Red Pete one of the passengers? Who's Red he Pete? He was, wasn't he? What if he survived? Was he the one banging in go. here? We heard Come someone on. here. What if he survived? I gotta go. Talk to you later, okay? Who's Red Pete? Fuck. Calm down, Jack. The story unfolds. Pills. I need my pills. Let's hey, get the pills. Jack. A serious accident. It's in the bathroom. Huh? Lots of victims. He's definitely dead. Hopefully. I don't know who it is, but... Do I hear running water? Yes. <sighs> Nothing.
nothing's going to happen. Christ. Uh, I've got to get back to work. Okay. We're running water. Hello? Or maybe someone just flushed the toilet, you know. What? 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 <clears throat> what do you mean, what? Technical break. At least I know I can pursue a career as a janitor if I need to. <laughs> what? Hell. What's going on? The radio? Everything's... It's gone right. mad in here, Let's man. Let's see if we were able to get anything out of this piece of crap. And miraculously, yes. The samples did spin. I'll transfer them to the chromograph in the lab. Let's go to the lab. All right. Let's load this up. I place the test tubes in the rack. And do it. Oh, here. This rack. <laughs> Take the pipette and set it to draw 5 milliliters of fluid. Ah, here's the pipette. Now, just take 5 milliliters from each. Uh. Ah, here. Precisely. Oh, 5. There we go. Oi. Five milliliters. Ah, okay. And the there we next. go. I like these small mini games, you know. Set the pipette to draw ten milliliters. Okay. Ten. Collect the second sample. Don't mind if I do. And there we go. No. There we go. Five more. And we'll set it up to 15. There we go. It's pretty immersive, yeah, with these mini games. We put the prepared sample into the machine. Enter crow enter chromatograph. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Check the printer results from the chromatograph. The results indicate that the deceased did consume alcohol shortly before her death. However, this is not an amount that could cause poisoning leading to death. Just slight inebriation. Okay. I can return to the body and continue the rest of the examination. Will do. Turn to the autopsy. The chromatograph results show that we can eliminate alcohol poisoning from our list of potential causes of death. However, remember that alcohol can affect the functioning of the entire body. Maybe she hung herself, it you know? the heart rhythm, accelerating its rate, and dilutes the blood which may result in more severe bleeding in the event of an accident. Also remember that alcohol affects the metabolism of drugs in the liver, which I'll now look at in more detail. First, oh. I'll pick up the syringe again. Select the syringe and obtain two samples for toxicology testing. I'll take samples from the liver and the heart to test the concentration of barbiturates in the body. Okay. Do we have to use the centrifuge again? That's enough. I'll do the test later. Yeah. I'd best Good idea. Find my luck with the centrifuge right no. now. <laughs> now I remove the liver. Oh, what's the liver? Is it this one? Yeah. No lesions. However, it is slightly enlarged. Perhaps it's a slight inflammation or drug-induced damage. 
It may also be the result of the deposition of substances from drugs. Let's check the weight of the organ. Mark the damage to liver on the clipboard. Okay, guess I did. Weigh the liver at the scale, then transfer it to the cutting board. Where do we have a scale? Here. The weight is 1300 grams. Sure is. The liver is enlarged. Transfer to the cutting board. Alrighty then. I'll move on to a cross-sectional study. Perhaps the enlargement is the result of early cancerous changes. The blade Dude. glides through smoothly. I don't feel like I'm encountering any changes with an unusual structure. Let's cut this liver into pieces. This is my last resort. No steatosis or cirrhosis. The liver is actually quite clean inside. Turn to the autopsy. The liver is basically healthy. We already know that the deceased didn't abuse alcohol. The question is what about drugs or other substances? Let's find out. I move on to the heart. Oh, we have something here. Oh. At a glance, we can see signs of a heart attack. Okay. The deceased is definitely too young to have a heart attack due to natural causes. Yeah. The liver is enlarged, not from alcohol poisoning, and the heart looks like it has collapsed. So, I guess we need to go to the centrifuge. Oh no. These barbiturates. Damn it. The last time I saw this kind of poisoning was a few years ago. I better check the data in my notebook. He was a middle-aged guy. He took his medication and forgot about it. So, he took another pill. He forgot again and took another one. And another one. And another and one. Of the last one. That's why it's better to have amnesic drugs. Alright. Oh, I shouldn't have done that until he finished speaking. 15 minutes. And 70%, yeah? I should be red. Red? 70%. Yeah, and 15. Uh, that should be it, right? Let's put it all down to zero first, maybe. I don't know. 15 minutes. 70% What's wrong? What are we doing wrong here? Well, we are look not looking at Alcohol It's barbiturates I don't know Doesn't give me any other setup pipette. Can't do that. What? Oh, come on. Isn't it supposed to be 15 minutes? It is. The minutes, 70%. Set the correct values on both dials and start mixing. I have. And why isn't it starting? Hello? Is 
They don't have any other, you know. Pipette, five milliliters. Yeah. Oh, we could... Aha! 10 minutes, 75%. I get it now. Okay. Ten minutes. We close the seventy-five percent. And pray that it doesn't trip anything again. There we go. Please, please, please don't. It looks like I, I think we're good this time. Yay! Let's collect the samples. We can take the samples to the lab now. Let's I do that. How she was able to get hold of these drugs. Here we go again. Okay, two samples this time. Six milliliters each. Yep. Set pipette. Six milliliters. There we go. Put it in. Ah, we have to do this. Now set it to 12 milliliters. There we go. Insert the pipette. There we go. Enter the chromatograph. Well, let's see how much of it we find. Well, well, well. Mm, nothing surprising. Okay. Significant <laughs> amounts of phenobarbital metabolites of hepatic origin. <sighs> Looks like I'll have to check the contents of the deceased stomach. Let's do that. Let's take out the, the stomach. Blood contained enough barbiturates to cause cardiopulmonary collapse. The question now is whether it was an accident or a deliberate act. I'm proceeding to examine the stomach. Before extraction, I ligate the entire organ to prevent its contents from spilling out. Yep. Okay, I'm now cutting out the organ, which will move to the board for dissection. Let's do that. Normally, the stomach and intestines are full of surprises. Let's see what we have eaten lately. Let's spill the beans. Uh, being very careful. And there we go. Not this time. We see remnants Those aren't of beans. food and a dense mass of pills. You don't take this many drugs by accident. Nope. Turn to the autopsy. Length and width normal. No obvious pathological changes. Could be overdose then, yeah? found in the stomach of the deceased. The direct cause of death was probably an overdose. Yeah. I'll check the rest of the organs, and then the nervous system. We'll see how significant the marks on the neck are for the whole case. So I look lungs at the lungs. No lesions. The victim was probably a smoker, but was unlikely to be in any serious danger. And the trachea? The deceased's trachea is normal. Complete patency. No food or fluid. And the intestine. The deceased's intestine is normal. No clear pathological changes. Abdominal cavity checked off. We can check the brain. Oh. Let's saw open her skull. I make a cut to open the lid of the victim's skull and remove the brain. What an awesome job, yeah? Or something. Imagine having this job. It must be so... I don't know, surreal. You know, cutting up 
once living people. Rain is normal. No obvious lesions. All right. I need to dissect it on a board. Let's dissect the brain. Using a knife, I carefully cut through the brain tissue. I peek inside a bit, and... Hmm. I don't think there's anything worth noting. As expected, the deceased's brain is in excellent condition. So it must have been or changes due to drug overdose, yeah? There is still the matter of the marks on the neck. They look superficial, but who knows? Maybe the spinal cord has been severed. I need goggles and a saber saw. I think the goggles were in the desk drawer. Oh, they're out there. The desk drawer, you mean in the office? What's this? Oh, they're right here. <laughs> oh, this Probably left it in the basement after its last cleaning. Let's go ask Ridley. It's gonna be a very long episode, but hey ho, it's exciting. Mr. Hey Ridley! I need a key to the basement. It's in the social room. Why is the key lying at the uh, never mind. Thank you. Hey him. Did you hear about the convoy? Yeah. Maybe you'll get a chance to relive your glory days and catch Red Beat again, huh? <laughs> Let's hope there won't be a need for that. Hopefully not. Let's find the social room. If only he could put that much enthusiasm into his Must work. be here, right? I get the feeling that searching through this rubbish is more pathogenic than working with corpses. Find key for basement in the social room. Here it is. Uh, please, may this be the last trip. So how do we get to the basement? This is my office. It's the bathroom. Through to the through the storeroom. No. Is this the way to the basement? Fuck. Why did the prison convoy have to get into an accident? Uh, Jack, take a deep breath. Deep, pleasantly cool breath. You're nearly finished with the autopsy. Then you can go home and rest. To go to the basement from the outside? Maybe. It's very dark here. Okay, I can't get this way. Hmm. Go through the garage, maybe? Oh, here's the basement. I'll take the saw. It's gonna be a long episode because we have to do Fuck. the whole chapter, you know? Doesn't anyone do maintenance around here? I don't know if there's any autosave other than chapter changes. I don't know what's going on. Why is he like sighing and screaming and what's going on? I don't know. You tell me down below. In the comment section. He's already sleeping. 
<laughs> oh, good old Ridley. <clears throat> Do like the soundtrack in this game. I hope you all took the opportunity to grab some coffee. And now that I have everything I need, I'll move on to revealing the spinal cord. Let's do it. Uh. Ah, okay. What a macabre job, man. What? What the heck, man? The spine is removed. I can see that the spinal cord was not severed. This shows that apart from the marks around the neck, hanging didn't negatively affect the condition of the deceased. Look at this body Ladies now. Gentlemen, Almost over. Now, to sum up and tidy away the body. The direct cause Jeez. of Samantha Barker's death was a heart attack resulting from an overdose of barbiturates. Traces found on the body suggest that the overdose was a deliberate act following a failed attempt to hang herself. Yeah. The autopsy found no evidence or genetic materials indicating that death could have been the result of an attack. Third party involvement must be excluded. Decide the appropriate manner of death. He just did? Ah, here. Suicide, yeah? Autograph, and we can start sewing. Here we go. In the 1950s and 1960s, the use of barbiturates for suicide was actually quite common. I think it was most talked about after the death of Marilyn Monroe. Well, let's close the body, sew it up. At home, it was a help and comfort. On death row, a farewell to the convicts. Let's stitch her up. Well done for today. Luckily. Thank you for your attention. <sighs> Tiring day. I can feel those hunger pains coming on. I guess I'll have to pick something up along the way. Gloves in the trash. Let's get that F the out of here. Cleaning. Uh, now I can go. Uh, camera. I didn't... Uh, a nightcap will do me good. We'll go turn off the camera. No? Okay. Let's go ahead, get a nightcap. And have a hangover again tomorrow. Let's get the hell out of here. Night, Hi, Ridley. Mr. Ridley. The police will pick up the body and accompanying documentation in the morning. Mm -hmm. He's sleeping. <laughs> I guess there are actually two things in this world you can be certain of. Death and Ridley's reluctant attitude. Ah. Where's my car? Here. Let's go home. Or to the oh, bar. Maybe three things. My whiskey on the rocks when I get home. I think that was chapter one. No? I guess I should have brought my jacket to work. Okay. This block can be quite intimidating when it's so quiet. Almost there. Ah, Stephen didn't want to go out for a drink tonight, so I'll drink my whiskey yeah. in the company of my TV. Ah, shit. What a bad friend. I forgot the muffin. Well, Ridley will have a nice treat for the night. I'm sure he'll be his happy, thankful self tomorrow. Hopefully this will be the end of chapter one. <laughs> so don't get a three hour long episode here. I don't know why why does why doesn't he take the elevator all the way up here? God what? damn it. What? Hello? What? what the fuck? Red Pete? But, but I, I 
I love oh. this. I'm, I'm sure of it. I think Red Pete has been here. Chapter 2. That'll be for another day. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the episode. It will probably out maybe later tonight or tomorrow. We'll see. So like my playthrough, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, bye bye.